Would you like to have a text animation like this one ready to use in any video? Today I'll show you how to create it from scratch in DaVinci Resolve and save it forever. That's right, you make it once and you can reuse it whenever you want in any project. Let's get started. In the media panel, right click and select new fusion composition, then click create. Drag it to the timeline and place it at the beginning. With the playhead over the clip, open the fusion page. The first thing we're going to do is add a background node, which we'll use to create the rectangle that appears behind the text. Connect its output to the yellow input of Media Out 1. Next, we'll add the text. Click the Text Plus icon, and it will automatically connect with a Merge node. I'll rearrange the nodes a bit so it's easier to follow. Select the Text Plus node, and in the Inspector, type the text you want. In my case, I'll write Shape Reveal. Now just pick the font and style you like. We're also going to increase the size of the title. You can set it to around 0.12. Perfect. With the background and text ready, we can start creating the animation. Now we need to add a mask to the text. Select the text node and in the toolbar, click the rectangle mask icon. Adjust the size of the mask to match the background rectangle we'll animate behind the text. Next, we'll start animating the text. With the text node selected, open the Transform tab in the Inspector. We're going to animate it by creating keyframes for the parameters, spacing and X and Y offset. Move the playhead to frame 30, and then enable keyframes for spacing, offset X and offset Y. Now go back to frame 0, and reduce the spacing value until all the letters are grouped together in the center. Then we need to move the text downward, outside of the mask we created. In offset Y, you can directly enter the value negative 0.2. If you preview the video now, you'll see a very simple reveal animation. Perfect. Let's improve it. Right now, the animation is linear. It comes in at a constant speed from beginning to end. We're going to smooth it out by creating a speed ramp. To do that, open the spline panel, enable the text 1 box, and click the Zoom to Fit icon to see all the keyframes. Select all the points in the graph and press the S key to smooth the animation. Then right-click on the curve, enable Ease In Slash Out, and a bar will appear above the graph. Click the Lock icon and drag the Ease In value all the way up to 100. We play the animation and done. We've finished the animation for the first text. Now let's start with the animation of the colored rectangle that accompanies the title. We're going to use the same mask we created for the text, but this time we'll apply it to the background. To do this, click on the output square of the rectangular mask node, hold it, and drop it onto the background node, like this. As you can see, the background is now clipped with the shape of the mask we already created. The animation we want is for the rectangle to stretch out from the center. With that in mind, let's start animating it. We go to frame 30 and create a keyframe in the width parameter. Then we go to frame 0 and reduce the value to 0 so that the mask disappears completely. Now we're going to smooth the animation just like we did with the text. We open the spline panel Deselect the text node by double-clicking the text 1 checkbox. Click the Zoom to Fit icon and select all the keyframes of the mask. Finally, we press the S key to smooth them and increase the Ease value to 100. If we play it now, we'll see the rectangle stretch from the center out to the sides. Just what we wanted. With this, we now have the animation of the text and rectangle ready. Lastly, we'll add a small zoom to both elements to make the animation more dynamic. First, we select the Merge node, and from the shortcut bar, we add a Transform node. Perfect! We go to frame 30. If you want the zoom effect to be slower and more progressive, you can start the animation a bit earlier, say from frame 20 or 25 and we activate the first keyframe in the size parameter. Now we go to frame 45 and decrease the size value to 0.9. We open the spline tab again, deselect the rectangle node, click on zoom to fit and select the keyframes of the transform node. 
we press the S key to smooth them and increase the ease value to 100. With that, we've completed the zoom animation. As I mentioned before, if you prefer a more subtle zoom, you can start the animation at frame 20 or 25. That's up to personal taste. The animation is already taking shape. I know working in Fusion can feel a bit tedious, but remember, you only have to do this once. Then you can save this effect and use it whenever you need it. Now we're going to create the gradient effect and animate it. We select the background node and go to the inspector panel. In the type option, it will be set to solid by default. Click and change it to gradient. Now we need to edit the gradient in the gradient section. Let's change the first color. We select the little arrow on the left side of the gradient and click on the black color rectangle. We raise the luminance slider to make the color selectable. And then in the color picker window, we choose the tone we want to apply to the background. Now we do the exact same on the other side of the gradient. We select the arrow on the right, open the color editor, and choose the second color for the rectangle. Perfect. The gradient is now done. Now we just need to animate the gradient, and we'll do that by adjusting the start and end values. Before adding any keyframes, let's set both points correctly. In the viewer, you'll see a green line with two squares at the ends. The red one marks the start point, and the green one marks the end point. We need to adjust this line so that it matches with the width of the background rectangle. First, we adjust the X value of the end point so it reaches the right edge of the rectangle. Then we do the same with the start point, aligning it with the left edge. Additionally, for the start point, we slightly raise the Y value, around 0.8, so the gradient animation starts from the top. Perfect, let's start animating. We move the playhead to frame zero and create a keyframe only for the end point. Then we go to frame 29 and here we move the end X value slightly to the left to around 0.8 to 0.82. We also increase the end Y value slightly to somewhere near 0.8. We activate a keyframe on the start point and move to frame 44. In frame 44, we decrease the start Y value to 0.2 and move the end X value slightly to the left to around 0.6. Hang in there, we're almost done. Now we go to frame 54 and move the start X value to 0.43, which is roughly the center of the viewer. We also adjust the end X value to create a slight diagonal line. Just move it a little further to the left to around 0.39, for example. These are the last keyframes, I promise. Now we go to frame 64 and move the start X value all the way to the right until it matches the edge of the rectangle. In my case, that's 0.87. Then we move the end X value all the way to the left to 0.18, leaving a small gap. And that's it, we've finished animating the gradient. Let's preview it. Great, the animation is almost complete. Now let's add the secondary text. Click on the background node and add a new text node. We organize the nodes to keep things tidy and go to the inspector panel. We type in the text we want and go to frame zero so we can clearly see it in the viewer. We use the same typeface as before. The size looks good, so no need to adjust it. Let's create a simple animation for the secondary text. We open the Transform tab and move to frame 30. We create keyframes for spacing and for X and Y values. Then we adjust the Y value to move the text down slightly, placing it where it fits best visually. Next, we go back to frame zero, reducing the spacing value to bring all the letters together in the center and decrease the Y value to zero. The animation is done. Now we just need to smooth it out. We open the spline tab, deselect everything except the text two node, click the zoom to fit icon, select all the keyframes, and press the S key to smooth the animation. Then we raise the ease value to 100. Let's watch the final animation. 
The animation already works well, but if you're perspicacious, sagacious, perhaps even cognizant, which I know you are, you may have noticed a small issue. The text appears in the very first frame, sitting above the background rectangle. Let's fix that. First, move the playhead to a frame where the background rectangle is fully visible, around frame 22 for example, and select the Merge To node. In the Inspector panel, change the operator setting from Over to Under. This will place the text behind the colored rectangle, but it's still not enough to fully hide it. To fix it properly, we need to create a mask. With the playhead still near frame 30, select the Text 2 node and add a rectangle mask. Adjust the size and position of the mask so that it covers just the lower part of the shape. Perfect. Now, if we play the animation, you'll see the text appears just after and behind the background rectangle, exactly what we needed. Good news, only two more steps to go before the animation is complete. The first is to add motion blur, and it's very simple. Select the text one node, open the settings tab, enable motion blur, and set the quality to 10. Do the same for the text two node. If we apply Motion Blur to one, we have to apply it to all. So let's also enable Motion Blur for the rectangle mask. Open Settings, check Motion Blur, and set the quality to 10 as well. Now the result looks much smoother and more professional thanks to the Motion Blur. As a noetic person, I'm sure you've already noticed. Final step, we already have the text appearing, but now we want it to disappear too. It's super easy, and we'll do it using a single node called Time Stretcher. Select the Transform 1 node and press Shift plus Space to open the Tool Selector. Search for the Time Stretcher effect, add it, and you'll see the animation has vanished. Don't worry, that's normal. To fix it, go to frame 0, head over to the Inspector, and double-click on Source Time to reset it. Don't skip this step, it's essential. Now we need to figure out when our animation ends. Select the background node, since it has the longest animation, and you'll see it ends at frame 64. Great. Move to frame 65 and select the time stretcher node again. In the source time parameter, enter 65. As you can see, everything is now visible again. Once that's done, go to the last frame of the composition, frame 149. In the Source Time option, enter a value of zero. A keyframe will be created automatically. Now, to reverse the whole animation, we need to go back 65 frames from this point. You can do this by typing negative 65 into the frame indicator, and it'll take you to frame 84. At frame 84, change the Source Time value again to 65. And that's it. Now, if you play the animation, You'll see it first appears, then plays the same animation in reverse to disappear, exactly what we want. Remember, you can save this animation and reuse it in any future project whenever you need. In this other tutorial, I'll show you how to save it as an effect in DaVinci Resolve. And I'll also leave you a free course with tons of text animations, so you can build your own library of effects without spending a single dollar. I'll see you there.